but you're just doing this for your legal math. And that resonated with me a lot. And this is where we then started to develop these, these templates that would help our attorneys to find their perfect match, their perfect team at an outside council for their collaboration. Number two, and it directly continues on the platform, I needed a way to move away from time-based bidding. And if we already are thinking through the profile of our matters, thinking through what we need, what easier way there is than putting it into an RFP where we want to determine what is the value that we're working together on with our outside council and how can we put that in relation to the cost that we want to pay to our attorneys. And then number three, diversity. We just said that we don't quite know where we are today, but we think at least 20% of build time from partners and 30% of build time from associates should come from people with diverse backgrounds. And to enforce that a little bit, we said we want to have that on every matter. And if law firms don't adhere to it, we want to withdraw 15% of the fees for that specific matter. Good. Um, shall we jump into diversity directly? Yes, um, when we, so we started in, in February, was it 19 or 2019? 2019. Yep. We started in February. By July, I convinced 80% of our attorneys that this match.com idea actually is interesting. <laughs> so since then, we have 80% of our matters being sourced through the Pursuit platform. After 12 months, we saw that 30% of the timekeepers that were recorded on our system were new. That is probably 22% more than in every year before for the last decade. So for the first time ever, we had a absolute new um, talent pool that we were working together with and then just because we asked after 18 months we had more than 50 percent of the partner time built to Novartis and 68 percent of the associates time coming from people with diverse factors. Yeah, and, and that's something obviously as pursuit we're really proud of Josh, we go to the next slide and just flash up. We have essentially a D9 module, which all that means is that the, our clients um, customise and have within each of their requests that they go to the law firms, they ask specific D9 questions. They ask questions around, um, is the lead or second chair going to be a diverse um, person, a person of diversity? Um, is the, where are the origination credits going? Are they going to diverse people? And where is the time being built? Is it being built from diverse associates? And the, the next slide will show incredibly just by asking, that is just by switching the, the D line module on, these are the kind of figures that we're seeing. 80% of proposals coming from law firms are offering diverse, um, either um, first or second chairs or leads in the matter. 65% of the origination credits go to diverse, part, um, diverse uh, lawyers and 66% of diverse time, or time being by diverse associates. So um, that is just the power of asking and institutionalising, if you like, um, uh, what's important and the d &I goals amongst your outside council. So incredibly proud um, of that and honestly it's not it wasn't a heavy lift, it was actually just institutionalising amongst the, our customers and made it front and centre so they could actually include that as part of their part of their RFPs. Okay, so we talked about DNI. and i We also um, uh, identified what about the alternative fee arrangements, cost of optimisation, how does that work on pursuit? Essentially, by being able to um, provide the in-house attorneys with best practice templates across the way in which they scope 
matters and have matters priced by their law firms. This is the kind of thing that we're able to achieve. So I'm going to walk around a little bit just so I can talk to this. But um, this is an example of um, all law firms pricing. Um, mat, uh, a specific matter. In this case, it's a paid litigation matter for, for Novartis. And you can see what happens. What we provide is a window of opportunity to allow law firms to revise pricing when they see where the competition is, and it's all finalised. And this feature was developed at the request of law firms. They said, we'd like to be given an opportunity to see where we sit relative to our competitors, and be given the option of revising our price real time. We don't need to, um, but we like that option. So we created that option, and the kind of results that we've seen have been quite dramatic. In this particular example, you had the incumbent law firm start for this matter at a million dollars and finish at $350,000, where the rest of the market was. So we had this great saying by putting price into the equation, we actually end up taking price out of the equation because Novartis and our customers now know how to get to a true market price and they can actually get the convergence of law firms within a, a range and then they take price out and they can choose on other criteria. So we'll run through how they choose on that other criteria. But it's a good example of, um, uh, of what we think is needed to shift the industry away from just effort-based, time-based, input-based, to outcome-driven in a way that delivers kind of, um, cost certainty as well as um, cost reduction. Um, okay, so we'll move on to the next slide. One of the really powerful things is being able to get just apples and apples comparison from your law firms on their proposals for your matters. If any of you are doing that right now, with that suit, likely would is it's probably being done manually, it's being put in the spreadsheet, and you, you've asked the law firms for their proposals to come back, and some poor souls had to put it all together in the spreadsheet. We essentially automate all of that, but not only automate it, we do it in a way which, um, uh, which allows you to see across all of the different phases and sub-phases and basically all of the activity levels. So you start developing some real um, data across pricing, not just at the, at, at, the, at the billing end, at the time input end, but really at, 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 at the beginning. And if Josh just scrolls up the top, you can see across all different phases, basically every one of your matters can be broken down into phases and can be priced. And helping, um, and helping the industry get educated on how we can do that, that's part of, that's part of pursuits, what we think is part of pursuits superpower. Um, but we know it's not all about price. It's also about strategic insights. So empowering the in-house teams to, again, institutionalise asking the right questions. Law firms, what are your strategies for success? Where are my weaknesses? What do you recommend? And being able then to have an apples and apples comparison from your legal service providers before you've actually decided who you're going to award the work to. So, and again, this is all, don't try to read the text, but it, it is all, this is the kind, this is the kind of insight and detail, particularly on high value matters, that you're going to have your firm provide for your work, um, uh, provide you, so you can make a better informed decision. So we talk about choosing the right firm, right price, um, so it's not all just about relationships. We all know the in-house attorneys have strong relationships with their law firms. This provides an ability to basically to, to add data plus relation, which gets us to essentially a, being able to then get to a scorecard view of your law firms, their proposals at a matter by matter basis, and then decide what's important to me here and what am I going to wait on. And that's what the pursuit platform enables you to do. You know, we've got some examples here of what you might wait. Is it pricing? Is it DEI? Is it the strategies that have been performed? Is it the past experiences of the team? Is it the knowledge of the judge? Whatever it might be, being able to actually institutionalize a process um, around selection. And so that is always then housed for you and a slot not lost in someone's inbox or with someone um, who ends up leaving. And institutionalise the knowledge for 
we organise that. Cool. Okay. I've got people up here because we know it can't be just technology. If I just roll that technology sector away, it usually doesn't work that well. Here's what we talk about. I, I certainly talk about it's it's technology, but it is gift wrapped in a beautiful box. And what comes in that box, and this is really kitschy, it might sound, it, but it's true, what comes in that box is the world's most experienced legal sourcing team. And how can I say that? I know because we run thousands of matters and five billion dollars worth of spend through the suit. All at the engagement level, so that we actually have seen the likelihood we've seen that kind of litigation matter before, that kind of MA transaction, that kind of government investigation work, and we've already got a template for the scoping of that matter that the that our sourcing team can help you tailor so that you can, you're asking the right questions, you're scoping the matter in a way that your firms can actually respond in a way that they haven't been able to do before. So I, I talk about that as a real kind of the, that's the secret source because we know it's not all about type of technology, it's the learning and it's actually having the expertise um, guide you in a way in which enable you to deliver the kind of, achieve the kind of outcomes, certainly the kind of outcomes um, uh, that Maris has been talking about. I'm just gonna ask for a time check, how many minutes have we got to go? Fantastic. Uh, I'm just going to pause there. Any questions from anything that I talk? We've got one question. Go for it. So you say DEI, and I saw diversity by asking, are there diverse audience? What are you talking about the equity and inclusion? Are you asking about the percentage? Yeah, so, so that's an excellent question. So what we decided to do is we thought we will basically develop a module which has the standard questions around DE and I, and the questions I've talked about. But because of our questionnaire, each of our customers can then ask all the diversity-related questions that are not captured in the mod module, and then they can then templatize that for themselves. So allowing, because the goals are different for different in-house teams, and allowing that, a level of flexibility to focus on that so that then that particular team or the organization can then institutionalize the questions that are important for them. But can also have the questions which are consistent across other customers too, so they can take the benefit of more uh, broader benchmarking data too. So, and that's really important. That flexibility to ask exactly what's important for your own organisation. Are you all focusing on um, other aspects of ESG? Is that something that's captured in the platform? Uh, again, it's funny. Uh, I'm going to show a slide towards the end which talks about um, what's important for the law firms and what you're assessing against your law firms. And ESG has been one of the most significant trends that we've, we've heard more recently. And we've seen customers start to templatize the questions they're asking across ESG. It's early days yet. Um, and so we haven't yet seen any real consistency in the way we're able to assess that across law firms. But I can see that as a significant trend over the course of the next 12 months. I've got a question down the back. Yeah, this is probably more Maris, but you breezed over how you got to 80% buy-in. <laughs> that is a fantastic question because that, that's the hard work. Good force. No, 80% is a number that we've achieved by by playing this. Um, really smartly. At Novartis, 40 people spend 80% of the outside council budget. So it's 80% of those 40 people that we had to, to convince. Um, that is an analysis that took us quite a long time to learn. When we started our journey, we, we thought we needed to convince the 500 uh, plus lawyers that we have. and. As a matter of fact, it's, it's, it's just these 40 people that do the majority of work, but we see a lot of voluntary buy-in from everybody else because they like what they see, they like what they hear. So compared to, to implementing 
e-billing, which our attorneys didn't like and took us years, it literally was six months uh, to achieve that. And what, what were some things you did that I, testimony was showing how easy it is to break, were there any other things you did to get those 40 people on Well, we, we kind of forced them to use the system because we no longer, <laughs> we no longer provided the service of pre-negotiating rates. We said every matter is different and you need to look into what you can afford on your matter. You cannot go to a database and, and, and see what I negotiated in January. You need to sit down and look what you can afford. And by developing a fee model, you need to see what is the appropriate reimbursement model for, for the matter. And that you can't do without the platform. So you're giving them a task and together with the task, you're giving them tools, which is the platform, and which is the pursuit team, and some of our internal operations team to really help the attorneys to be successful. So I consider myself and, and the team that I'm working together with like, like a concierge, helping you know, to make this match between someone who's looking for support and also, by the way, helping the law firms to do business development within the wireless. I am successful if the program is successful, so I need to support our own attorneys as well as the law firms that we'd like to see succeed within the wireless, that they know the right people, that they know how to pitch in order to be successful. That being said, after being probably the most hated person at the virus amongst <laughs> our law firm community, we now have, over just the last two years, completely reimagined that relationship. And I have quarterly meetings with our law firms that more or less go according to a very simple agenda. So, in the area that you're responsible for, um, there are 20 matters, you've been invited to bid 10 times, you bid 7 times and you won 5. So what went wrong? What can we do to help you be more successful in the next quarter? And, and the great example of, about that one is in the 10 you work invited, who can I introduce you to within the business so you make sure so you can get invited the next time? So that's the kind of the concept of a business development um, piece from within the law firm that I have to say I had not predicted when we first launched Pursuit, but, and ultimately, I always say, if we're going to be really successful, we've got to learn how we're delivering value to both sides of the marketplace. You've got to learn about values of law firms as well as value to come. And, and Maris's example, those kind of insights, I used to talk about as a partner, doing all of this work to get on a law firm panel, and then to hear critics, nothing. Because there was not an easy way to get transparency about who's getting the work, am I getting an opportunity for, um, to, to pitch? So when I when I first heard that story from Maris, it was a really a revelation around we actually can help improve that relationship and find ways in which to not only deliver the kind of benefits for, for, for the customers, but find new opportunities for to work um, for, for the law firms across, let's say, different practice areas or deeper in existing. Board. 
what we found actually is the single most important determinant of success in a program like this is no doubt senior legal leadership by that is key and the messaging that comes from the general counsel down is key if we don't have that support um, uh, if it's purely grassroots driven it, it's hard work so that is that that would be my single you know, the, I think the most significant was can we get the senior legal leadership buy in? Once you've got that, I can tell you everything else um, falls into place. Okay, I'm going to finish up with a little bit of a sneak preview into what we think the future looks like in this space. Um, ultimately, with all of the buying and selling that happens on pursuit and all of the data gets captured on pursuit. Um, my prediction is what's going to happen is you're going to have essentially a marketplace. You're going to have a marketplace where Fortune 500 plus are buying, are buying their clean services on a single platform driven by data. And I'm going to give you an example of what we're going to release at the beginning of Q3, which is essentially what we're going to call the pursuit value quadrant. What does that actually mean? If you look at the left hand side, you've got some the basic kind of criteria when you're identifying who you're going to go out to and invite to submit a proposal for work. Is it going to be a panel firm? What area of law? What, what jurisdiction? What service level? In this particular example, we've got, you'll see in the top right hand, we've got the pursuit score. What does that mean? That means based on all of the data we have gathered, gathered um, in relation to the law firms you see, Pricing data, win rate, loss rate, how many times they're getting invited. We can, we've developed essentially an algorithm which identifies who should be um, a, let's say, a, a well-priced um, prospect for a law firm for this kind of matter. Who's expensive, high price, top left-hand corner. So you want, people, you want the firms in the top right-hand corner. They're great value, okay, and, um, uh, and they've got the right expertise. That's on the pursuit score. We can do that ultimately on any data point that you capture. If we do it on diversity, then you get a different, you to get a different result. So that will be that's going to be the power of being able to capture all of that buying data. And then when if you've got a firm, I can't quite read it here, but if there's a firm that that's looking like they should be invited because they're providing great value um, and they're in the right place in the quadrant. Okay. Let me learn a bit more about them because I don't use that firm, or I do use that firm, who do I need to be reaching out to? And then giving you a really easy way, um, because we know firms are not going to respond if they think it's absolutely a cold outreach and they're used as a stalking horse. So helping create that new opportunity for the law firms and helping, helping you um, as the in-house team reach out in a way which, which tells the law firm um, that this is a real, a genuine opportunity. So, so that's what we think the future is going to look like in the buying of legal services, and I think the, the kind of data that we're starting to generate um, is going in that direction. Okay, I think I've got one or two minutes to go. Any other questions? Yes, in the front again. Do you do any integrations, or is it? Yes, yes, because pursuit focuses basically at the buying end. Um, and there's lots of players out there in the e-building and management end. We just integrate into, and you identify what data, which data points you want integrated into your e-building and management system. So I pick my law firm, it's all accepted, you know, Correct, correct. Matter ID, law firm, price, whatever those data points in, you push those into your um, e-building platform. Um, the front. And, and with artists, are you doing better management in the same way? Or you We're sourcing e-discovery exactly the same way. And we're sourcing other services, maybe in bulk, where it makes sense that we're purchasing services for an entire year. But it can be done very well through the Pursuit platform as well. Awesome. I think there might have been one, one more question. So what percentage of your legal spend do you get when you the global hours for the Okay, so it's now, it's very, we have, we have some customers that have got, they, they mandated 90% of their spend has got to be through pursuit and it's got to be non hourly billing, so fixed fee. We have other customers that have set less ambitious goals that have gone from 
year one 30%, year two 60, year three. So it really does depend upon the client and basically where they are in their own journey. Um, so yeah, we have a full spectrum there. Okay, to wrap up, um, well thank you everyone. If you want to know anything else about us, please visit, visit us for um, booth 325. There's plenty of popcorn. Um, and um, we'd love to